What is going on, guys? Welcome to the Wednesday night live stream. I have Peter from Reef News Network on today. How are you doing today, Peter? Doing wonderful, buddy. Always good to see you. Yep. Yes. No, that was pretty awesome. Um, a lot of fun. Did you end up buying anything at the show? Yeah. Ah, ah, yes. Ah, fair enough. Give me one quick sec here. I just want to make sure desktop audio is actually working. If you guys are listening, just let me know if you can hear them. It looks like it's not 100%. There you go. Talk. Is that better? Yeah, it is. All right. We're back in business. All back right, Peter. Business. How are you doing? So we're on today. We got, just in case you didn't catch it, we got Peter from Reef News Network. Peter, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be on the show with uh, you and your amazing audience. Uh, I love watching all the questions and stuff on your Facebook group. You have a an amazing, inquisitive audience that uh, really loves to interact with everything you do. So pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you. And good to have you. Uh, right, so I think the audio is hopefully good for everybody now. Sorry, the quite delay. Um, so yeah, Peter, we were actually just hanging out at Reef of Palooza a week or two ago, which was pretty awesome. Yes. Nice to find, finally meet you in person. I know, I know. We've chatted. We've been on like these live sessions and doing yeah. all this good. I keep looking over to my left. I got like multiple <laughs> screens here, so I'll, I'll try to keep looking at the camera. But yeah, it was uh, it was awesome to finally get to see you and, and hang out. And you got to come see the tour bus and and, and all that it, nonsense it, that went on. It w it was a pretty sweet ride, I have to admit. <laughs> yeah, for yeah, yeah. for it, for what it is, it's pretty sweet. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't complain. But uh, but yeah, that was awesome, and it was awesome to be at a show. Um, I, I that so we're going to talk about taking frags home from a show because Justin, mm. what are we two weeks away? You're coming yep. here. You betcha, man. I'm coming to my hood. Yeah, yeah. So you're coming, uh, coming, coming to my neck of the woods to a show, <laughs> and uh, and I said, hey, why don't we talk to your listeners about traveling and transporting frags either. You know, from a frag show, if you got a couple hour ride all the way to the craziness that mm -hmm. you do bringing them through the airport. <laughs> and every time I do, I always get a ton of questions on, you know, how do you get to bring it back? What do you do? And everything else. So I figured it'd be a good topic for today. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and there's a bunch of good, like, purpose built products now, you know, too, that people are making, mm -hmm. like, mobile transport products and, you know, some that are in, uh, um, you know, like insulated, uh, you know, like uh, Yeti mugs and stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. it's insane. So, so it's becoming commonplace. This is no longer. <laughs> like an insanity move people are doing this all the time no exactly and um the funny thing for me because i i mean i've drove and flew i've done both but usually when i'm coming at least with the border stuff they're usually confused i usually explain to the, them the rules all the time and stuff and it kind of helps that i know know exactly what it is and they can <laughs> check it and i'm right so it's like okay it makes it easier <laughs> but it's always one interesting bit that is awesome. Yeah, I, I didn't even think about that. So yeah, if you fly back, you, you got to then go through customs. So mm -hmm. you have to declare all this stuff and all kinds of. Yep. <laughs> yeah, you oh. cer certainly do for at least for the folks in Canada. When you're flying back, the biggest hurdle is actually the water volume is because I know like the building obsession makes a really cool frag carrier. Mm -hmm. However, that's too much water volume for Canada. So I always end up using these lovely little pickups because they have a measurement in their 100 mils. So Canada, they don't even care what it is. It has to be less than 100 mils. So, yeah, so they don't care if you had 30 of those as long as each individual oh, one is no, less no. than 100 mils? Oh, oh I wish, I am wish. Am I getting ahead of myself? You are. So oh, boy, all right. you have, since I actually kept it, you have this lovely little one liter bag, which is the maximum all your fluids can fit into. So that makes it interesting. <laughs> That's it? So it basically translates to four pee cups you can squeeze in if you alternate them, go upside down and right side up. And alternate them you can you can fit four in there oh my god i know it the struggle is real uh, <laughs> all right so so just so 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 i know you've done it both ways i know you've yep. driven over the border and picked mm -hmm. up stuff and then i also know you've flown back what's the deal with driving stuff um you? driving just declared it and wasn't even a big issue now, so no, nobody's ever held you up with uh, any kind of paperwork for, you know, living animals or, or anything like that? So the rules for at least coming into Canada, uh, inverts are okay. So I usually just buy like Zoas, Rockfires, that type of stuff, softies. Um, mm -hmm. 
if it's encrusting, you have to make sure it's not on the CITES list. That's the big thing. On so, the what list? Um, CITES. So oh, on the endangered species okay. list. If it's yeah, yeah, not yeah. on that list, it's okay. If it is on it, then you need permits. So, and, and what kind of marine biologists do they have at the border on staff to determine that? <laughs> so a nice big pro tip for everybody is if you pre-go on the CITES site and you look up the scientific name and print it out to show that, okay, you've already searched for it, is there or not there or whatever. And it goes for that. So that, that makes a big step, you know, like, because I got a bunch of rock flowers and I already had the cr loose crucif whatever the heck it's called, the technical name printed out, being like, hey, yep. it's on here, it's not on the list. And I have a sheet saying, okay, inverts are allowed as long as it's, you know, personal use, da da da. So doing your homework, printing out and doing all that stuff makes a big difference. Um, I should actually link all that stuff in the description later on for whoever's watching the replay, but definitely cool. makes a big difference to your homework. Awesome, awesome. Yep. Yeah, I don't have that problem. Uh, I, I've never tried Jealous. to get back into this country with anything. I, I, I certainly, uh, and I have not attempted to fly with stuff. If I had <laughs> flown back from Reefapalooza, I would have went bonkers because we did go to WWC on Monday, mm -hmm. and um, uh, it, and it was. You know, talk about an adult candy store. I mean, oh. un unbelievable what's going on there. And I apologize, you guys are probably picking up my dogs barking <laughs> in the background here, but. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So, so I haven't attempted, but I, I've transported stuff, you know, a good amount of distance. And, and there's certainly, you know, and, and I've driven even like, you know, from here to New York with traffic's three to four hours. Mm -hmm. I mean, that can get dicey if things are cold out too. So, you know, without a doubt, there's certainly considerations you want to give, even if you're driving to, uh, you know, semi-local show or, or anything of that mm -hmm. nature. I mean, I know the show we have coming up, Keep on Reefing, is in Groton, Connecticut, which kind of yeah. has a New England appeal. And, and mm -hmm. a New England appeal can mean anything from you know 30 minutes to six hours you know and you're still kind of in that range that people will drive to especially in the northern states where they don't have a big reefing community mm -hmm. so you know prepping and, and going to a show ready to take stuff home it, you know it takes a little bit of thought a little bit of uh preparation but it's absolutely worth doing i mean if mm -hmm. you know don't hesitate to go to a show that's five or six hours away because you're like well what can i bring home anyways it's too far you know? i travel way further you guys got you guys got it easy <laughs> <laughs> that's tr that's true yeah. i mean you you got you probably whoa hang on course <laughs> everywhere jeez louise mm -hmm. this is not my my normal setup here so I'm, yeah no problem i'm ad-libbing the whole thing here with equipment so but um yeah so what do you so take me through when you go to a show let's let's okay. uh let's just pick a, a general let's say it's a, a let's just say it's a six hour ride let's say it's a relatively long ride you're gonna yep. go to a show what, what do you bring to prep all right so assuming i'm driving uh First thing off the bat, bring a cooler, whether it's star foam or like, you know, a foldy one or a hard cooler. If it's a couple frags, you can even use a thermos, but you want something to keep the temperature. So one of the biggest things with the frags is keep not, not getting too hot, not getting too cold, you know, depending on the time of year. Um, so even with driving, whatever, make sure you have a solid cooler. Um, if you are going a longer duration, I mean, they ship corals overnight and stuff, right? So sure, I mean, sure. overnight's not a big deal, but you know, if it's winter time, have a heat pack in there. And another big thing with heat packs, you don't want it touching your water. You, you know, tape it to the lid or something. So it's just ambient temperature and not direct mm -hmm. temperature. So the last show I was at, I saw this guy <clears throat> had a styrofoam cooler mm -hmm. that he kind of taped up and, and secured with some like heavy duty, um, like duct tape. And then he had one of those, you know, little cheap uh, thermometers that, um, you know, have the, per the little digital ones that you got mm -hmm. for like $8 from Marine Depot or wherever. Um, had two of those mounted to the side of the cooler with the probes running inside yep. and then he had like compartments in the top that he made to put like the heat packs and stuff mm -hmm. or he even depending on the time of year had it set up so he could run cool packs too hmm. but he could monitor the temperature the whole time yep. and i was like yeah that's genius for seven or eight dollars sure even if you took like a rigid cooler and modified mm -hmm. it and stick the probe in there you can at least keep an idea of what's going on and know if uh you got to rush it and and get going or if you need to pick up another heat pack or something so that's a cool little pro tip that I've never seen anybody else do, even though it's simple and fairly logical. Another one, actually, that I saw Buddy Andrew at um, the Niagara show. He had a cooler in the back of his truck with an inverter and a heater and water in it. So it was heated <laughs> water and he floated all his frags in. Like he had a very long journey to go. But I was oh, like, that's, next that's, level. Actually, that's actually not a bad idea. No, no, that I mean, yeah, sure. I could pick up a, so you're going a couple know, days 300 and... watt inverter for 50 bucks and, uh, mm -hmm. and then run a, you know, what? 80 watt heater or something just to yeah. keep uh four or five gallons warm sure dedication I, going the I like distance. that i like that yeah yep you build you build out a whole you could get a whole like rolling system like 
<laughs> there you go. <laughs> Could be good. How much frags are you buying? <laughs> yeah. um, for flying, uh, water volume can be an issue with some airlines. I had a nice big box cooler for the Niagara show and they would not let me check it as luggage. They said I had to go cargo because of the water and everything else, which really? had to be a couple hours ahead of time, which was kind of a, a not fun situation to be in. So oh, well, we'll do tell what, what would you do? Thankfully, uh, I knew someone that was not too far away and they come and picked up my giant box of coral and jellyfish and shipped it to me the next day. So oh thankfully God, jellyfish in there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh... So, so thankfully I had someone to help save me with that um but normally that would have been you know it was a stressful situation you know half an hour before my flight and they won't let me check my my giant loot box <laughs> yeah yeah so something yeah, to avoid yeah seriously so mm -hmm. yeah so that's uh, i mean that's super cool there's a you know you always go to these shows you see people with coolers and everything everywhere but there's a bunch of really cool like purpose-built items <laughs> who's that <laughs> that's the wife <laughs> see this arm coming by <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's a bunch of really cool like purpose-built like travel containers and stuff mm -hmm. i you know i know there's a, probably a bunch of companies but one company i do know well is um building an obsession yeah. they do the ones that we talked about where you can get the the small and i should have brought mine down but mine's in like pieces everywhere but you know they make this small like spin lid one that has one two three four five six seven or eight maybe holes for different mm -hmm. frags in it now I, I, to, to me, like this is best suited for Zoas because much of anything else starts to crowd each other because they yep. are pretty close together. Um, so if you're going to buy in Zoas, these are great. Um, but they make like other awesome ones that are built to fit in like specific brand like um, Rubbermaid containers and stuff. Mm -hmm. So like if you're going all in or you want space, you're gonna buy some SPS sticks or something. You want to be able to space everything out. Like that's a, an awesome idea. They cost a little bit of money, and they're I think they were really kind of made for people going to sell at a frag show yeah. more than a consumer buying. But, you know, if you're They're serious awesome. about this, what's, you know, what's $80, $90 to have a good, solid, rigid transport system for, you know, $1,000 worth of frags you're picking up at a show, yeah. you know? Especially if you do it on a regular basis, right? It kind of pays itself off quickly. I mean, just to ship something's, you know, 40 50 60 bucks. so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pays itself off pretty quick. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's it, you know, so, and then, oh, they got the the coolest one, the one that I think that's awesome that, that, to me is the best way to go is they make an insert for a five gallon bucket yeah so you just drop it in the bottom put in whatever water and then then you can go in there stackable too so mm -hmm. if you're really like going crazy so but are you aware of anybody else that's making anything purpose-built like that um at the niagara show there was a company that was doing it i don't remember the name offhand but yeah like the five gallon bucket ones i thought it was a slick system where they had that and you just have your trays just and stack them up that's a really good yep. way to do it um, yeah, that's cool yeah so going to shows you, if you haven't went to shows, 100% go to them. They're a lot of fun. You get to meet cool people like Peter in the background here. And awesome place to find corals, tons of frags, lots of good loot. You know, there's always wicked deals to be had. Oh, most yeah. vendors bring their fire. They, you know, they want to show off their good stuff at the show. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, we did a whole, just for your listeners that don't know who I am, you know, I run a podcast about saltwater aquariums and reef keeping. We did a whole episode about how to prep for a show. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and... You know, there's some methodology behind it. Like if, if you're like serious, if you're a serious collector or, or a serious hobbyist, if you just go to mull around and whatever it is, what it is, but you, it behooves you to make a plan to go to the show. Like look at the map. Most, most all shows publish a, a floor plan, you know, prior to the show. Take a look at that. If you know there's a specific vendor, because most of the times for these shows, vendors will start posting on Facebook or, you know, somewhere like that what they're bringing to the show or like some, you know, epic pieces that they're going to have or something. If you know there's something you want or, you know, let's say you're a big stick head and you know there's a vendor there that brings the fire for, for sticks and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. figure out where that is. Make that your first stop. You know, get there early. Don't underestimate the lines in the door. But, you know, kind of kind of have a plan going into, especially when it comes to like budgeting for it. You know, don't don't go and get crazy. Spend all your money you allocated for the show, mm -hmm. you know, because you, because you walked by one like piece and you're like, Oh my God, you know, like if know what your tank can Must endure, know what, <laughs> yeah, seriously, yeah. seriously. But like, it, it's, you know, not that plan goes to not only having a plan of the show, but take inventory on your tank, you know, know, know what you can put in your tank, know what you want, be conscious of coral warfare. You know, if your tank's loaded with, 
you know, nothing but torches. Don't buy some real delicate thing that's going to sit in the middle and get stung like crazy, you know? So taking, taking that half hour to kind of plan out what you want, what you're trying to get out of the show and then who's where, when, and why goes a long way for ensuring you get Mm -hmm. like the best pieces possible and the best deals possible, but that you have a good show too. Like, you know, you don't leave there frustrated. Well, another kind of thing to consider too is like there's two two different types of crowds or reefers generally. Usually the people that want to be there first, they want to get the best, coolest, rarest pieces. And the people that want to be the last ones there and get all the sweet deals at the end of the show. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and they do. They give them out. Mm-hmm. If you're at a, a two-day show, be there Sunday at, you know, four o'clock for a five o'clock closing yep. and the deals to be had. Like one of the vendors I remember seeing, you know. I, I saw. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you're chopping. No, no, no. Go, go. Sorry. Okay. So one of the vendors I remember seeing, it was like two for one frags. I'm like, oh, why didn't I wait a day? <laughs> I could well, get that a was the end of when I was down at yeah. Aquashella, Dallas. Like the show ended up like I had people coming over because I was doing all the announcements and stuff there. And everybody at like three o'clock or maybe four o'clock on Sunday. And I think the show closed at five or six came over, you know, half off this. And then they came over 15 minutes later, buy two, get one free. And then mm-hmm. like 30 minutes later, they're like, you know, buy one, get two, you know, three free, you know. So. A lot of these vendors, you guys got to remember, travel a long distance and they don't want to take back because it's a big risk for them. They would mm-hmm. rather make something yep. through volume and go home with less of a risk mm-hmm. than to make nothing and go home and then lose the pieces on the way home. You know, so, you, you, you know, you're not going to find bounce mushrooms for 50 bucks. Like, you know, let's be fair. People, you mm-hmm. know, there's some limit to it. But <laughs> you will definitely find like some good basic entry level corals being blown mm-hmm. out. You know, buy one, get two free, buy three, whatever. Yeah. Whatever the case is, if that's the, what you're in for, if you're not looking for specific pieces, that's the time to be there. Mm-hmm. Another type of thing to consider, too, is uh, not just corals with hardware. Usually, you know, all those display models, tanks, a lot of stuff you can get some sweet deals on after the show. And they... raffle items, too. I mean, oh, a yeah. lot of the tanks get the guys raffle off, too, and... Um, you know that's it's well worth putting in for those things so you know you never know because the tanks the, the one thing mm-hmm. to remember if you're going to a show and you want to win a tank be prepared to take it that day i've never been to a show where you didn't have to leave with the tank yeah. and if it's a display tank you sometimes even have to help break it down like get the yep. stuff out of it like down in aguashella dallas the guys at uh, saltwateraquarium.com gave away a beautiful water box mm-hmm. that was one of their display tanks but the guy had to come over and like break it down they got the fish and the coral out and they were yep. like here you go and the guy had to drain it down take the rock out you know break the whole tank hey, down that's, so if, that's a fair trade for like 500 dollars off a tank that was used for 48 hours <laughs> oh ser- seriously yeah but mm-hmm. just be prepared don't don't go don't be don't be delusional thinking you're going to go and win some big tank and they're going to ship it to you or somebody's <laughs> going to bring it to you nine 99.99 of the time you have to walk out of that show with go, that thing yep go rent a van get the u-haul out <laughs> that's it so Mm -hmm. but But if you are you know driving distance or have the means it's a wicked way to get some new loot for really good deals uh seriously and i mean yeah go go gauge it most of these places have the you you drop the tickets in the bucket kind of thing Mm -hmm. you you can get a good idea of uh you know what's there and then most (laughs) all the shows yeah there you go (laughs) weigh it out most all these shows you got to be there to win very few shows have i ever been Mm -hmm. to where they'll you know take names down and everything else and uh so if you see the crowd dwindling and there's an you know raffle at the end of the day (laughs) and there's only like 50 people left your odds have really kind of increasing no matter how many tickets are in there but Mm -hmm. (laughs) so someone came and bought out reef's booth on sunday at 2 p.m there you go someone came and took the whatever i remember someone talking about that they literally came up and said i'll give you this much for everything that's left and just cleaned them out it's Will crazy. Becker from, I don't know if you know Will from um, uh, Coral Connections. I know there's something, I know there's another word in his name, but he's from Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. He runs the Philly Splash. Uh, he closed down shop early at Rap Orlando mm-hmm. and sold off everything he had. He didn't want to bring anything back. So he, mm-hmm. he made like some crazy deal and sold like one rack to another vendor there and then sold like a whole other rack to like some dude that was where, but like crazy cheap deals. Cause he yeah. just didn't want to, he came, he flew into the show, set up his tank had his coral ship there. Didn't want to bother shipping them back home mm-hmm. and just blew it out at the end and walked <laughs> away with, with nothing, nothing. I even sold the tank. The tank was sold everything. <laughs> nice. So, and, yeah, yeah, it was awesome. And if you're looking for a tank and a deal, that's your time to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yep. Yeah, don't I mean don't hesitate to go around. If you see a display tank, you can guarantee that they brought it there or somebody put it there 
you know, to get the name out. So, you know, Red Sea or Waterbox mm-hmm. or whatever, don't hesitate to go up to the booth and be like, what are you guys doing with this tank? Is there a deal to be had on this? You know, you guys want to get rid of it? Mm-hmm. Not, you know, very often, I, I think most people would like to sell it. Yep. Hey, that. it's easier than taking a part and shipping it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, seriously. So, so. Pro tips. There you go. Pro yep. tips. One more. Oh, I'll give you another good pro tip. If All you're right. serious about getting, like, if you're the real collector and you got to have mm-hmm. the best deals and everything else, just about every show you go to will offer a VIP ticket that gives you an hour mm-hmm. early access. Yep. Spend the $50, $75 or whatever. If, if, if you truly have to have the first pick of what's there, buy the VIP ticket, get in the hour early, and that's where you can make your deals. Mm-hmm. No, very, very true. There was a lot of a lot of dealing going on at the very beginning of the show at wrap last time. It's amazing. Yeah, I don't. That, that was. Uh, I don't. I didn't recall what those were, but they, they didn't call them VIPs. I forgot what they called those yeah. passes. That they said something on their passes. They had special passes to get in early, but they let them in like crazy early, like seven a.m. and the sh- doors didn't open till eleven. Like it's still I, setting I'm, up everywhere. I've never seen that happen before. Mm-hmm. But hmm, they probably got some wicked deals. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. What are people saying? You got any comments? I can't see anything. This is so weird to me to be doing yeah. it like this. Pump for the show should be good this time. What's up, neighbor? I need VIP tickets, but can never get them. Is there? Hey, if we will keep on reefing. Is there VIP tickets still for that one? Are they also there? Available? Are our VIP tickets still available? Absolutely. Nice. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. So I, I will say this. Uh, you know, I know you have a lot of listeners all over, and a lot of listeners that probably mm-hmm. can't make it to that show. We are giving away an apex el to anybody that pre-buys a ticket tickets are only ten dollars and you do not have to be present for this one it will be for everybody who pre-buys a ticket so i should so pre-buy my ticket you're saying even if you can't make it to the show you should go f- drop the 10 bucks as essentially a raffle ticket <laughs> nice so I like you go it. online buy them the 10 bucks and then you get put into the entry for the the apex el all I right know. i'll enter tonight <laughs> 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 you you're can not, never have too small. many controllers. What? Put 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 under a fake name. Oh, get the wave to butt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Safe. <laughs> that would be good. Uh, in Vegas, won't be able to make it. Too bad. Too bad. If any of you guys are in Connecticut or surrounding areas, make sure you guys come out to the show. A couple weeks away. It's coming up fast. It's gonna be good. Yeah, crazy fast. So, yep. what are you? Uh, are you gonna attend? Well, I know you're staying. I'm are coming. You staying, are you staying past the show? or Are you gonna get in early? I am the second to the eighth. Second to the eighth. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, the show's the fourth. So uh, so you're not going to, well, yeah, you could buy stuff if you want. You could throw it in my tank for sure. But I are you looking for anything it. when you come to the show? Just something cool and awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing specific. I, I, I know I know we got rock flower nems coming. Yes. Yeah, we do. <laughs> so I, I got copious amounts of rock flowers. Thanks for shipping so, it, Kevin. <laughs> I, I know this, you know, we're, I'm getting off topic mm-hmm. here, but I saw the post that you had a baby. So you got your, your uh, rock flowers to spawn? Three. Um, yep. So those are my original batch. So there's three little tiny babies in there right now. So did you see the spawning event no, or you I just see the babies? Yet. I just keep finding little babies. So um, that's sp- awesome. Speaking of babies, I just got this little blue flashlight today so I can baby hunt. Um, nice. Because if you have the nice UV light, you can see that little fluorescent glow of whatever color they are. That's a good way to find them. Um, Completely random tip. Um, actually, speaking of, these flashlights could be good. Mo- most shows have the crazy blues on anyways, but if you're in somewhere of the wider lights or your LFS and you want to see the coral has some really cool glow, one of those little UV or blue flashlights are a good way to take it around. Like, oh, that one has good potential. Yeah, but, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, mm-hmm. so, you know, it's a good way, too, to see everything under a consistent light because if you have that flashlight and come right over something, you'll override the above light. Yep. And then that way you will see every coral that everybody has at the same Mm-hmm. lighting you know because a lot of times with these shows people you know utilize all different kind of brands of lights types of yep. lights maybe that little flashlight doesn't match what you have at home but at least then you can see consistently across mm-hmm. the board what everything you might buy will look like yep. under the same light as opposed to you know no you know having some because you can't get a big discrepancy it's it's kind of been shocking to me how mm-hmm. big of a color difference something is once you get it under your lights compared to the vendor's lights even just like my tank to buddy's tanks a coral can look completely different it's, cra- it's crazy how much that bit of spectrum shift can make yeah Huge. yeah it's, it is really yep uh then mint was asking how willing are vendors to haggle or are they pretty fair on prices i find most are pretty willing to deal a, a bit anyways and more yeah, so yeah. the later the show goes on 
Absolutely. Yeah. Like, do not hesitate. I mean, I, I never, and some, some vendors will be like, no, that's the price of the price, but don't ever hesitate to be like, especially if you're buying vendors. Here's the tip. If you're buying one piece, they're probably not going to work with you. But if you're buying two or three pieces from them and yep. say, all right, you know, there's a 20, a 40 and a $30 piece. Mm-hmm. Why don't you, uh, you know, why don't you give me that whole batch for 60 bucks? Yep. A, a lot of times they'll do that way more than you just being like, I want that one piece for $40. How about mm-hmm. I give you 20, you know, kind of thing, you know, make it worth their while because, you know, you got to remember, like there's a lot of work and overhead that goes mm-hmm. into it. But a lot of times at these shows, you find vendors that are just doing shows. They don't necessarily have a shop overhead. You know, they, they have the cost of the show and the cost mm-hmm. of equipment to grow out these corals. But at the end of the day, you know, if somebody's doing their business right and they're really growing out colonies and stuff, you know, the the the, the property wiggle there, you know, so so don't hesitate. I mean, you know, the worst they can say is no, I guess is, you know, the moral of that story. Don't be unrealistic. Don't offer, you know, ten dollars for a hundred dollar piece. But, you know, if you can find two or three pieces together, absolutely try to knock 20 bucks off the bundle yep. price. Exactly. And that's the bundle thing is the key thing, right? I mean, same thing. If I sell a frag as one frag, I'm like, eh. They buy a couple of the prices. The deals could get sweeter and sweeter, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so same thing online. I mean, you always see, you know, with your rock flowers, you know, mm-hmm. buy buy 10 and get this much off, buy yeah. 20, get this much off, you know. Buy, buy 50, volume, get this you know? much off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Volume, volume definitely helps. <laughs> um, so another option is if you don't want to dry back, you can ship your stuff back. So that's another very viable option, especially if, you know, you got a bit of a journey home or you have someone home that could receive it for you and you know you're going to be a few more days. That's another option. Yeah, I mean, most everywhere you go, I mean, a lot of these shows are not in rural areas. A lot of these shows are in, you know, decently traveled, um, centralized locations, and that's why they're having mm-hmm. a show. I mean, you have club swaps and stuff, but that's a different beast than going to, you know, one of these shows. But no matter where you are, you probably can find uh, a UPS store or a FedEx mm-hmm. store or something. You know, it's going to cost you money, so make sure you add that into kind of your budget of when you're considering how much you're going to spend mm-hmm. or even how much you're going to spend. Don't, you know, don't buy a Zoa that, you know, retails all day long for, you know, $10 a polyp. He has them for nine, but then you're going to ship it for $30, you know, yeah. like be, be a little logical about what the, the net cost of the whole thing is overall. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, you know, typically you're going to have no problem finding a shipping facility somewhere within the area of where that show is that you could go and overnight stuff to. Yep. Um, another big tip, too, is if you buy something on a show, ask the vendor to hold it until whenever you're leaving. Because um, I always go to shows, you know, I'm traveling, so I'm always like, hey, I'm going to pick it up Sunday at the last possible minute. And, you know, pretty much every vendor's not going to care and they're going to hold it for you. So they'll just put in a little different little bro or the back of the tank. And you can pick it up later. That way you're not worried about temperature swings or water fouling a little bag of water for ages, right? So the other tip to that is take a picture of it. Yes, yes. I, I did. I bought a clam. I had a vendor. I went back and I knew, I knew it wasn't the same clam. I'm like, that's not that. He's like, yes, it is. Yes, it is. He insisted. I took it. The thing ended up being dead in the bag before I even got oh. home. And, and I knew, I knew it was not the clam. So I learned my lesson there. If I ask a vendor to hold it, I yeah. snap a picture of it. Uh, I usually take one of the little acrylic rods they have, put it right down next mm-hmm. to it, snap a picture of it so you can see exactly what it is. And then when you go back, if you have any question whatsoever, you can kind of compare it. So yep. and not, not that vendors are typically nefarious, but it happens. I mean, you got two side people, by side you know, that look similar. Absolutely. People mm-hmm. coming in and out of the booth, everything else, you know, or or you go to the bathroom and so and so covers and they don't realize that the back row is being held or whatever the case is. So mm-hmm. not to say no, but anybody's trying to pull anything, but do yourself the you know the favor and if it does happen and you go back don't don't get you know don't get pissy about it understand that stuff happens mm-hmm. and then try to make a deal and be like all right well you know you sold that piece out from under me how about give me a deal on on whatever you know use that to yeah. your advantage yeah exactly it's a good way to work it um yeah. another another big tip take a picture of the booth you bought it from especially if you bought a bunch of frags like wait which booth did i buy that again when there's like 30 <laughs> booths in there Good, that's good. That's a good one. Yes, I legitly had to wander around for like twenty minutes and look at them. I'm like, okay, that one looks familiar. That one looks familiar. <laughs> Terrible, but it's true. Yeah, that's good. This <laughs> that's is, a good idea. I didn't think of that one. That is a oh. very valid one. Oh, man. <laughs> mm-hmm. So what? What? So oh, I, I got another tip. So fish. If you're yes. gonna buy fish, fish are a whole different beast. Mm-hmm. Fish consume oxygen, and they cannot last in a bag as long as coral does. So. 
typically any fish that you buy, they're shipped overnight, but mm -hmm. before they bag them up, they actually inject oxygen into the bag and then kind of capture it. You're not getting that at a frag show, more mm -hmm. than likely. So be conscious if you're buying coral and fish that your fish have a much shorter safety window than your corals do mm -hmm. if you're just going out for dinner after the show or you got a four hour ride and you're going to stop and whatever, you know, just, just be conscious of that. Either avoid buying it or um, find out if somebody at the show has a, has the ability to, you know, hit the bags mm -hmm. with actual true oxygen to kind of make them more travel worthy. Um, more water volume as well helps, right? So it's not going to foul true, as yeah, quickly, yeah. Yep. you know, there's more oxygen in theory in there. So it's another good one. Um, one thing that I have seen a couple of people do more for shipping, but they'll put like a little chunk for, for corals, put like a little granule to a carbon inside of the container. No, um, I've never I, seen that. I haven't tried this, but I thought about doing it just for like longer journeys. So if they do release anything, it will kind of absorb it in the carbon. Yeah, that's a so, good idea. Mm -hmm. So that's pot cool. potential that one. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. All right, what else we got? Another big thing, a little random word. Uh, an another <laughs> big one too. Like a lot of these are like if you're traveling somewhere far, you know, you can rope it into a vacation. You know, plan your vacation first and the show at the end. You know, certain little tips like that to consider. That way, it's not as big of an issue if you, when you want to bring stuff home. Uh, uh, how, how come you're not bringing the random arm to Connecticut? Uh, it's, it's expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, oh. Someone says, love the hat. Who's it from? Uh, this is from, um, 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 oh, boy. Total brain fart. Um, it'll come to me. Mm-hmm. It'll come to me. All right. I'll be back. So these guys make hats. They make rash guards, backpacks, coral, coral, socks. Coral wear, I think. Cor is it coral wear? I don't know. Something similar. I think it's coral wear. I think so. All right. Hang on. You keep talking. I'll I'll, I'll use the Google. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. I'll, I'll be, I think you're right. I think it's coral wear. That's sticking out in my head. Uh, take a pick of the vendor. Take a pick of the coral. 100% agree with you on that one. It makes a big difference. Take yes, the photo wear. of the booth and, you know, and then the photo right after each other. And the coral that way you can look scroll through your photos yep that's the one get you know which one to go pick up so that you know that's that's a good you know here's a tip too i mean i know it's a little bit different but online auctions have become kind of like a, a second place that people go to you know from shows too they've become kind of like these mini online shows mm -hmm. in facebook you can save any post you know they drop yep. the three little buttons drop down mm -hmm. when i'm good bidding tip. on stuff on online auctions Anyone that I win, I hit and say save post, and then I go back later, and it makes it way easier to figure out what you won than trying to sort through the totally out of order algorithm that Facebook presents you with on whatever yeah. the the live auction or whatever it was on Facebook. So, so that's mm -hmm. another kind of little mini mini mm -hmm. logical, but a lot of people don't think of it tip yeah. for Facebook auctions, which can kind of be like a mini show. Didn't you know you could save them? Just learn something new. There you go. You have nice. three little dots. Dot, dot, dot. Click it. Perfect. Save, Excellent. Save post, I think it says. It, it was Coralware, by the way. Coralware clothing. Okay, perfect. There you so go. They were, they were cool guys. I met them last year out in Chicago. They got a lot of cool stuff, and uh, and, and I, I like it. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a hat connoisseur. I love mm -hmm. my hats, and uh, it's, it's held up very well. It's been good. It's very cool. I don't know how well you can see it, but coral on the brim, yep. nice black one. So and they have a couple different styles, too. So Looks, looks good. I like it. Hey, I, thanks, man. I like terrible it. hats. So I never wear them, but it looks good on you. <laughs> well, you know, when, when you get to my age and the hair fades, hats become your best friend. I just got grease now. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah, at least you got hair. Like, you can do something cool with your hair, you know? <laughs> Fair like, I, I, would, I would kill to have hair again like yours. Oh, uh, Awesome. Uh, a couple of people in the chat were saying Kush Coral sells them. There you go. So you got another option. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bobby. Bobby's carries them. A lot of people carry them. They, they partnered with a lot of people, but uh, I think it's, uh, what was it? What did I say? It was Coral, CoralWearClothing.com. Yep. But yeah, yeah. Bobby carries them out at his shop. So Nice. And I think the guys might be from the Chicago area that started the company. So that might be uh, why they were out there. I could be wrong on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't remember much these days, but <laughs> that happens. Okay. So we just had Reef of Palooza. Next coming up is Keep on Reefing. And yes. conveniently in the comment, someone's asking, where do I get info on this show in Connecticut? Do I need to buy tickets prior or do they take walk-ins? They take walk-ins, but keep on reefing expo.com. Buy your ticket online because you're entered to win the Apex. Nice. So it, it doesn't cost you any more. Tickets are $10 at the door or tickets are $10 online. No difference to you whatsoever. So do yourself the favor, buy the ticket online. Again, even if you can't make it to the show, even if you have no intentions of driving, going, whatever, you don't live anywhere near it, 
uh, you know, what's ten dollars for a raffle ticket for an Apex EL? What, what are those retail at? Two ninety nine, three oh, and change. I think they're more than that. They're like three or four hundred, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So there you go, ten dollars shot. So I might buy one uh, to see if I win it. <laughs> there, there you go. You know, so. Mm-hmm. No, nope, that'll be good. Okay, and it is on when? May the fourth. May the fourth be with you. What are you wearing? I don't know. I, I no. Listen, what? you, my friend. Yes. I have high expectations given your past history what? What? with costumes. Okay, I, coming, I'm flying the across the country. Did you see my group costume from Halloween a couple years ago? That was good. Yeah, so I, <laughs> that was a good so one. So you, you better come, even if it's a cheap, crappy one, you better come yeah. with something. I'm expecting. Speaking of the OSA, we've got Mr. Scott in there. What is going what? on, buddy? He must have heard us talking about core. <laughs> And Kevin, hit those thumbs up, drop a super chat, support Devin of Patreon. Kevin, you're an amazing man. Thank you so much for the super chat. Much appreciated. So Scott was saying, keep on reefingexpo.com. That's it, baby. Uh, I know. I'm excited for it, man. It's coming up real fast. A couple weeks. couple weeks. And we got all kinds of good stuff planned. I, I um, heard rumors that I may have be entered into an aquascaping competition. <laughs> That's no rumor. You know, it's podcasters versus YouTubers. You guys are going down. Uh, so I it's me against you, eh? So it's me and Jeremy <laughs> versus you and Richard. It's on. It's on. <laughs> it's so gonna be good. You got. You guys can either tag team. I'm. I'm gonna be the hype man. I'm gonna let Jeremy scape. Yeah. I'm just. Gonna, I'm gonna work the crowd. That's you know. That's my specialty. So. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the applause, right? That's what wins. Ah, uh, not even on pure aquascaping skills. We'll see. No, nobody cares. So at Aquashell mm. in Dallas, I I commentated the aquascaping contest between Joey DIY and George Farmer, who's a world-renowned aquascaper. Joey DIY literally dumped the stuff in the tank in three minutes and walked away, and it <laughs> looked fine. I mean, it looked fun. You know, it looked good enough, but. George Farmer spent 15 minutes aquascaping a tank, and nobody could care less. Nope. Uh-huh. It was 100% people there to see Joey DIY clap and applaud, and, and he won for the second time in a row because they did it in Europe, too, and uh, it was a popularity contest. So I, ha- so I have to make it look awesome and hype it up. I see how this works. That's it. That, you, and Richard, <laughs> you, and Richard, you and Richard better start communicating now because yeah. – I'm gonna make sure somebody broadcasts it live too, so all your fans can uh, can watch watch uh-huh. the the destruction of the massive takedown <coughs> of the YouTube. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So we'll see about that. <laughs> Although this is your hometown, you got like your cheerleader squad probably already lined up. You're like, and, and I am the reigning <laughs> champion. I I won last year. Yeah. I was the the king of all things rock last year. Dun dun dun. <laughs> all right, setting the bar high, man. Um. <laughs> So Michelle was asking, where is the expo? It's in Groton, Connecticut, yeah, right? Yeah, it's at the okay. Groton, Connecticut yeah. at the... Uh, bu- 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 Groton Inn Suites. Groton Inn and Suites. I kept wanting to say Gold Star. That's the name of the bridge that's right outside of it. So yep. Groton Inn and Suites, Groton, Connecticut. Yep, right off the highway. Easy on, easy off. You can stay there. There are other hotels across the street. Uh, we got the Mystic Aquarium and Mystic Seaport nearby. Uh, we have the casinos nearby. A um, lot of stuff to do. So, you know, if you want to make a weekend out of it, awesome. Scott, mm-hmm. the next day, nice. um, is having a, a get-together up at OSA, having a, a Cinco de Mayo get-together <laughs> post-party. And then, uh, and then we're having a, a private private by invite only party <laughs> nice <laughs> on saturday night so beautiful um, get the reef shine guys are, are going to be in town staying here at my hacienda and uh and that always ensues quite a, a party afterwards so i'm coming to visit <laughs> yeah, you are indeed you're 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 on the the velvet rope list yes uh, it should be good i'm excited it's gonna be a lot of fun and speaking of the today's topic i will definitely have to acquire some corals at the show and bring them back you might Absolutely. have to babysit for me. Yep. Buy them there. We can yep. stick them in the tank here until you're ready to roll out, and uh, you'll be good and mm-hmm. secure. We'll put them right in the frag tank for you. I'll, I'll I'll clean up a space on the frag rack just for you. Much appreciated. Uh, get the toothbrush out. I'll make sure yeah. it's all, and I'll, I'll get little tiny velvet ropes and <laughs> section off a section for the famous, <laughs> the internationally renowned YouTuber. <laughs> Devin Rich of Reef Dudes will have a tiny little velvet rope <laughs> section on my frag rack. I, I'm honored that the, the world-renowned Peter from Reef News Network will host them for me. <laughs> <laughs> Semi-regional famous. Semi-regional. All, all over, buddy. All over. The, that's the internet. The internet is borderless. Oh, that's it. Unfortunately, that's it. bringing corals I'm, back I'm has borders. I'm huge in Bulgaria. Excellent. Really? That's- 
Nice. No, actually, you know, oddly enough, I'm huge in Sweden. Not, I'm not, not me. Reef News Network is. We have a ton of listeners in Sweden for some Ooh. reason, and I don't know why. That's awesome. Right on. It is awesome. I, I'm going to love it. So, uh, but yeah, you're right. I mean, it, it knows no boundaries. Mm-hmm. That's so awesome. Um, another random thing is too, because I ended up going to a couple shows a year. Uh, it's fun. I like it's like souvenir corals too, right? So you're like, oh, this one came from this trip, that one came from that trip, that one came from that yeah, trip. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and it's kind of fun because it, it almost adds more story to your tank, right? Like I'm like, oh, I bought that rock flower, and where did I buy one? I bought one Orlando last year, right up here, and the other one, like, I, oh, those ones came from Vegas, Mac. Now, like, it's, it's I bought fun. these sixty in Vegas. I got these forty five in uh, California. This hundred over here came from uh, Florida. It's not that bad. <laughs> You're in the tank with a shovel mover. <laughs> I wish. Uh, no. I, I'm, the, t- the tank now is kind of cut off from frags for the most part, so i got to be really picky inside cool stuff now. Dude, you know what you need? You need that 40-gallon, 8-foot tank that that guy had at Rap. Did you see that thing? That super shallow, wide one? Yeah, it was 8-foot long, but that yeah. whole tank was only 40 gallons. Put like a hundred rock flowers over an eight foot thing. That would be so crazy. You would need like a thousand rock flowers to cover that, but that would be amazing. That would be amazing. I do. Let's, have, let's get on that. Once, once I get enough baby making in the nano tank, that thing's just gonna be covered in rock flowers one day. It's gonna be glorious. It's gonna be a sea of flowers, like underwater garden. It'll be good. Yeah, you're, you're become the the. I was trying to think of a cool name, but I couldn't do anything on the fly. The Lord the of rock. the RFAs. There you <laughs> Something. go. Gosh, God of rock flowers. Now nah, I'll come up with something. I'll work that. That's a work in progress. Put a pin in that. We'll come back to that. All right. Okay. Sounds good. Should be good. All right. So we got that. We got shipping stuff, bringing stuff back, getting the deals at the show. What else are we missing? Are we missing any other kind of key points around buying, traveling? Oh, bringing them home. A um, couple things to consider. Actually, on your podcast, a good one that consider if you don't have salt water made up, uh, if you buy a bunch of stuff and you need to dip them, you need to like, acclimate to your tank, make sure you yep. have a stash of fresh salt water to re-add that water to your tank. Yeah, that's like my downfall all the time is like I never think of that. Like that's the one thing I always forget. Mm-hmm. And then I'll get home and I'll be like, well, I guess I'm running to Petco to buy a five-gallon bucket of salt water because I don't have any prepared and now I got to dip all this stuff. So, yeah, mm-hmm. that's the easiest one to forget. Mm -hmm. And it's necessary because you want to dip your stuff, guys. You don't know where these, even good vendors, sometimes they're bringing in special stuff just for the show, Mm -hmm. quick turnaround times, or they're, you know, the wild caught Vietnam frags and stuff, those big like Zoa rocks that you find dirt cheap, beautiful rocks, great value, but they're wild caught Mm -hmm. and they're guaranteed to have stuff on them. So don't shortchange it. Have a plan for dipping. Make sure you're prepared for it. Mm -hmm. Have your dip ready, have your bucket set up. But most of all, have your salt water because you do not want to take five gallons out and let your ato drip in so turn the ato off dip your corals Mm -hmm. put your salt water back in and do yourself a favor Mm -hmm. and make your whole tank happy this is true it's true you get a bonus water change now instead of turning the ato off just dump in some new salt water first then scoop some out or or less work less work but um look at you look at the big brain on devon that's canadian ingenuity right there experience but experience (laughs) (laughs) Uh, anything you uh, recommend avoiding at a show? No, I don't think so. No, I didn't know at all. Seriously. What? Oh, what? Look for stuff that's fresh cuts. Ah. All right. Fair. Look for anything that's not happy. Do not ever take the word if, if a coral is all closed up and ugly. Be like, oh, yeah, it's this beautiful size of a softball thing when it's all open. No, no, no. Don't buy it if you don't see it. And mm-hmm. the biggest thing, though, is a lot of people, and again, I'm not saying any vendors are nefarious, but there are v- some vendors that are more meticulous than others. Mm-hmm. There are vendors that will frag up a bunch of stuff and go right to a show, and you have a bunch of unhealed, fresh-cut frags, and you do not want fresh-cut frags. Mm, this is true. Uh, good good point. Go. Good point. Didn't consider about that one. I like it. Um, yeah, fresh-cut, usually trouble. If you get some crusting, doing that little base on the frag plug, you know you're good. If the frag plug's too white and shiny, you know it's probably fresh. It's got a little bit of algae, a little coralline on there. You know it's been in the tank, all healed up, good to go for a while. So little yeah, things to yeah. look out for. 
especially i mean you know it's it's kind of a little harder to tell and and not so applicable with like sps i mean you can kind of just snap those off and they're mm -hmm. good to go but any kind of lps any kind of softy or anything you know look a cans like if you can see like a really shiny white side you can tell they just cut that mm -hmm. like steer clear you may still lose a head or two on there while it still heals up or you may end up getting some sort of disease or something because at that time frame they're still really susceptible to you know any kind of of parasites pest or even you know dipping and stuff too because mm -hmm. they're still you could just gotta be really careful so I, I try to avoid any kind of fresh cuts like the plague you want stuff that is growing as healthy has been established another good idea too is don't hesitate to ask the vendor what parameters they run at yeah. you know where how's it what what's the light this has been growing under and how do you keep your tanks you know um some people do run mixed systems and and you know against kind of better advisement will run some sort of trace chemicals like a lot of corals you know you can't be running corals with copper and stuff but some people will medicate tanks with coral in them just just ask how you know what their quarantine process is yeah you know if you're buying a five dollar zoa don't don't bug somebody you know mm -hmm. to roll the dice with your five dollar zoa but if you're buying a four or five six hundred dollar piece ask the questions like do not mm -hmm. hesitate to you know understand how it got to where it is what they're running at what the best way for you to acclimate is um you know these these people for the most part are, are hobbyists and lovers you know as you are too mm -hmm. um they're not going to be upset about explaining nope exactly and greg actually greg just threw a very good point uh one of the best things what shows you can see how colorful they are in person um, that's a big thing too. In the past, I've ordered a frag before and it showed up and it looked like nothing like the photo and you're kind of bummed out about it. Or in person, you know exactly what it looks like. You know, there's no Photoshop in. It's legit. This is nice yep. and colorful, which is another big thing for shows, right? Because you're getting exactly what you think you're getting. That's it. And if you buy an ugly frag, it's nobody's fault but your own. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like, you know, generally at shows, they run heavy blues, and heavy blues make corals always look extra awesome. So, I mean, it might not be as cool as white lights. You know, some vendors will let you turn the whites lighter and see what it looks like in not non-disco mode, but, you know, yep. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, don't I, I mean, you know, don't, don't bust somebody's butt for $10 in corals, but mm -hmm. if you're making an investment, if you're buying some high-end SPS, you're buying some crazy bounce mushroom, do not do not feel like you need to be rushed. You're making an investment. Mm -hmm. Ask the questions you want to know. If you want to see it under white lights, ask them to turn on the white lights. If they're not willing to work with you, yeah, then you know how willing are you to give them mm -hmm. seven, eight thousand dollars? Like, like you should find yeah. somebody for for that kind of investment. That person shouldn't be you know bending over backwards for you, but they should be extremely realistic about your asks as long as your asks are reasonable. Can I see it under white? Can you explain to me what your acclimation process is? You know, yeah. blah blah blah. What what salinity are you running your tanks at? What calc are you? You know, there's nothing unreasonable about asking those questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, one quick thing I just want to throw out there. One of the things that you mentioned earlier was asking about how, what type of lighting they're running or, you know, what par range is that? Another thing to consider about par, if anyone watched the Monday video, I think it was this Monday's, um, there's also par and duration. So just because someone runs something at, you know, 200 par, it could be 200 par for four hours or eight hours is, you know, double the energy. So something else to kind of consider, get a rough idea of, you know, how long and what intensity it is. If you don't know, um, you know, if you buy an acro or something, you know, start on the sand bed four or five days later, move it up a little bit and wait a little bit, move it up a little bit and kind of acclimate to your light. Uh, newer lights, you know, a lot of the fancier brands will have acclimation mode, so it will do it for you. You just put it where you want and it'll turn your lights down by 40% and slowly ramp it up type of thing. Yeah, and that's not going to bother your other core. A lot of people are like, well, what about my other cores? Your other cores will be fine. They can go dark for a few days, so they can certainly deal with reduced lights for a few days. and It's not going to bother them at all. Like, always always cater to the newest member of the coral family mm -hmm. um so pete was asking would it be best to dip acro i know some can't be um dip everything the only one slight hesitation is deep water acros mm -hmm. they're not fond of a dip um i would still dip it but i just do a very short dip um yeah and don't 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 dip anemones you can dip them in iodine, but nothing you else. You can dip them in iodine, yeah. but man, dipping in pure iodine without knowing what you're doing is really dicey. So either do your homework or don't dip anemones because anemones generally are not carrying any disease. I, I, I iodine dipped all my rock flowers. They all made it. Yeah, but I mean, I'm sure <laughs> yeah. you know you spent the time, researched it, understood it. As mm -hmm. a general rule, 
I mean, unless you're going to invest the time in understanding what you're doing. Don't come home and be like, hey, iodine, dip, dip. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you know, there's a mm-hmm. process to it. It's not just, you know, so. Nope, definitely. Um, so with that, yeah, definitely dip everything. Deep water is the one. Like NEMs are a good one. Don't use the general dips. Um, deep water acros, I find they're not very fond of dipping. Usually if you dip them too long, they'll bite the dust on you. So be very quicker dip. Uh, the other thing I do when dipping is use like a either like a little empty syringe or a little turkey baster and blast the corals. So that way if there's anything on, you're going to dislodge it. And yeah, because there's, I mean, a lot of corals go in these tanks. You know, most vendors are going to be dipping their own stuff. But if they bring stuff just for the show, something could get mixed in. You never know, right? So it's yep. always better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. Yeah, and then if you have the ability, if you have a frag tank or a small tank that you can put stuff in and isolate for any kind of waiting period, always a good idea to do that, too. I mean, um, I don't do big, long quarantines, but I do have a frag tank that a lot of stuff will go into first. Mm -hmm. At least in the frag tank, if I see something going wrong, it's easier to react to that Mm -hmm. than it is in the display. Yeah, no, exactly. Now, quarantine corals, in theory, would be a good practice if you have a quarantine tank for that. I don't think many people do, but it would be a good idea. I know, it's, I know, he sees <laughs> random arm it's in the background. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, so quarantine corals would be wise. Uh, most people don't because it's a whole other tank that you got to have running and you know stable. Have you ever quarantined a coral? No. Yeah, didn't think so. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna even attempt to lie. I don't even quarantine fish. I'm like the worst. That's fair. Um, I, yeah. But, but I am. I, I won't buy a random fish. Like I'll only buy from very specific people, or what you know. So like mm-hmm. I trust in who I'm buying from. Granted, stuff can get by them too. But yeah. I mitigate my risk as much as possible by buying only from people I trust that have a process to quarantine in place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, that's good. Very good. Definitely helps. Uh, not clean on gelfter shots. Yeah, but buy, buying corals in persons is honestly one of the, the biggest benefits if you are there to collect and get stuff and not worry about gels and Photoshop and alter photos and all that jazz. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah and good. again, too, like I said, most vendors will start posting. Most all shows have some sort of Facebook group or something. Mm-hmm. If you're looking for something specific, throw it up in the Facebook group and be like, mm-hmm. hey, anybody have, uh, you know, whatever. And if they do... Don't hesitate to make a deal even before the show yep. and have the deal contingent upon it being what the pitchers are or whatever. But that's another option, too. There's a lot of people that will make deals before the show even happens and then uses the mm-hmm. show as a place to pick up because it's cheaper than shipping. And the two people are maybe four hours apart, but the show puts them at two. You know, mm-hmm. they're going to both be in the same place. So same thing, too. Don't hesitate to utilize a show as a place to make deals with other hobbyists. Yep. If, you know, if, if you have somebody you want to make deals with, and, and again, they live six hours away, but you're going to meet at the show, and, you, and they got something you want, do that too. Use the show mm-hmm. as kind of a meeting place to not only, you know, find the deals and stuff with the vendors, but you capitalize on the people that are going to be coming to the show to, to look for deals and opportunities, uh, to do trades, like trades are great with other people and stuff. Just use the show as kind of a, a, mm-hmm. a location to meet up at. Nope, that's a great way to do it. Actually, when I went to the Niagara show, I had like four or five people I was trading with. I had a whole slew of corals I brought down with me to like cross country trading. So it's a good way to do it. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what Jeremy does. Like every every show he goes to, he has like eighteen deals going on. The first like four hours of the show, you never even see him because he's walking around like making his trades with people and everything else. Like <laughs> he he takes it to a whole new level. That, that's some experienced extreme show going. It's good though. It, it's it's, he, Jeremy's got it down. He's he, he knows what he's doing. Yep. There, Matt was just saying. I use my phone for white light. It's a good way to do it. You got the flashlight yeah, yeah, built into your phone. Throw the flashlight on. You can see it there. Mm-hmm. Again, anything you put directly over the coral is gonna block out the blue lights and put whatever your density. So, yeah, it's a good idea too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Didn't think of that one. It was good. Uh, I don't know. I think we covered most of it. Got any other tips, thoughts? No, I, I just, you know, get out to the shows and support these people. That's, mm-hmm. that's it. You know, the show is, is most of the shows are evolving to be more than just a frag swap. Like if you're going to a frag swap, that's usually put on by your club or something. And it's very basic and simple, but even club frag swaps are growing to the next level. Mm-hmm. The show is a good opportunity to get out, support people that are in the hobby. So sometimes shows have hobbyist vendors there as well as local fish stores. Mm-hmm. Keep on reefing has a, an aquaculture room specifically nice. for hobbyist vendors and then your local fish store. So it's a good way to get out and support these people that, 
um, you know, maybe you can't make it to their store, but you're still helping them out. Mm -hmm. It's also another good way to support conservation in the industry because you're buying stuff that's being hopefully for the most part aquaculture in some capacity. I mean, it comes in wild, but a lot of these vendors are fragging and growing and bringing in, you know, frags of stuff. So every little bit helps. And and there's something for everybody. Like the shows are great family atmospheres. Like, you know, keep on reefing. We're going to have, uh, we'll have music. We'll have the scape off contest. We'll have the rolling raffles where people go around and, uh, you know, do raffles at each booth, which oh, is nice. really unique to our show. Um, yeah. But then at these big shows too, you know, you have speakers, you know, rap has all these high end speakers there. Aquashella has, you know, all kinds of things in their festival stuff. So, the show's really evolving, and it's just another way to really be part of this community. So if you have an opportunity, take it. Most of all these shows, general admission is usually around $10. I mean, mm. it's it's absolutely Cheap. worth it. Um, mm. And again, like even, like I said, keep on reefing. You pre-buy, you get an entry to win an Apex. Like, like you, these guys, usually shows are doing something for everybody. Like, you're getting mm. an opportunity for everything, you know, so. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Come out, make it part of your your list. Plan ahead. Look at the you know season. Make a destination trip. Do that mm -hmm. at least once. I mean, that's so cool to do. It's really you know. But um, but don't hesitate to do it. Like you know, make a point to go out and do it. Make a point to get out there, experience a show. If you haven't been to one, you got to do it. It's it's They're a lot of fun. Pinnacle part of this hobby. Another thing to consider too is it's a chance to geek out with a bunch of people obsessed, just as obsessed as you are. <laughs> Uh, you know at least locally you may or may not have as many you know buddies around you that are all reefers so you go at the show you can go geek out all night long and hang out with tons of other equally obsessed reefers oh always an after party i mean if you want to hang around there's always people going out hanging out afterwards you know so yeah it's, it's a mm -hmm. big social event it's absolutely worth going to and and deals 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 all all kinds of deals so they're mm -hmm. worth going to do it yes. keep on reefing come to it if you can't I'll see you buy a ticket anyway. Two, three weeks. All right. Yeah. How? What? I don't even know what today's date is. Seventeenth. So that's one, two, three weeks. Three weeks. Nice. Just shy of three weeks. Gonna be good. So. All right. Gonna be awesome. Heck yes. All right, Peter. I think we covered most of it. If people want to check you out, Reef News Network. Where do they find your podcast? Uh, anywhere you get your podcast, we're on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, on your Amazon Alexa, say, hey, Amazon, play the podcast Reef News Network, and she'll play it for you on there. So uh, also, you can go to our webpage, reefnewsnetwork.com. All the episodes are listed there, and we try to post them up on Facebook as well. Every Tuesday at 8 o'clock, we have a new episode, and episode 58 just came out last night. Nice. So uh, and that was kind of a recap of the trip to Reef of Palooza and talking about some of the new products that were launched there. And uh, yeah, and that's it. Nice, awesome. And if people want to buy tickets for Keep on Reefing, get in that draw, win, win a potentially win an Apex. Come yeah, to yeah. An awesome Keep on show. Reefing. Hang out. right on the homepage. Buy your tickets. Buy a general admission tickets for ten dollars. Everybody that purchases uh, before tickets will be cut off the night before for online purchase. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll cut it off the night before, and then we'll draw it at the show. Maybe we'll do a Facebook Live, I'm guessing, and, and draw it live. Um, so you don't again, you don't have to be there to win it. We'll ship mm -hmm. it to you. So don't hesitate. Even if you can't make it to the show support the show by mm -hmm. buying essentially a raffle ticket and Cheap entry to uh, you win. Know, not really it's an entry ticket but with a chance to win and uh, and yeah and help to support a bunch of great people putting together a good show to have a good time out in the northeast nice love it love it all right guys there you have it make sure you check it out if you're going to be in the area definitely come say hi we got a cheer for the youtuber side to win that competition <laughs> yeah uh kevin thank you so much for the ten dollar super chat if you guys and actually thank Ooh, you that's awesome kevin gabe and robert my three patreons appreciate you all thank you guys very much and if you guys enjoyed the stream as always smash that like button if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button and i'll see you guys on the next live stream